very big welcome to all of you and to Avadi Grover's 85th anniversary exhibition. Come closer, come closer. Abate, welcome to you especially, coming from Accra, to your two children, Ni and Na. Where are you? Yeah, yeah, come forward, come forward. And to your two grandchildren who have flown here, especially from the United States, to be with the grandpa. <laughs> yeah. As many of you know, I first saw the paintings of Abadi Glover at the Africa Center in 1982 and invited him to have a show here, our first show from the African continent. Yeah. Abadi stayed, helped me hang the next exhibition, participated in all the goings on here and then took that template of October Gallery back to Accra where he started Artist Alliance on Timo Road. But now he has a brand new gallery, not so new now, a few years back, on Labadi Road, which was opened by Kofi Annan. So uh, Abade is our most uh, senior and most wonderful artist, and we appreciate so much your work over these years. And we're so grateful that you have come here to be with us tonight. Thank you. I just wanted to also say a few words from my side. And I want to express what an enormous pleasure and privilege it is to find myself surrounded not only by Abnade, but also by his vibrant work. This work seems to be more sumptuous than ever. It graces the walls of the galleries in a particularly striking and vibrant mode. Abnade has held nine solo exhibitions at the gallery. Three of those were in the 1980s, so that's quite a vast amount of exhibitions. When we held his last exhibition here, in 2014, his 80th exhibition, I said to Abnade, if you're holding your 85th exhibition, that's such a long way away, can't we do another exhibition in between? He said, no, you're going to have to wait, and I'm going to produce a wonderful body of work. And I waited. And here it is, and I'm so happy to see it. The paintings arrived in huge rows. 35 paintings, lush and full of color, red color, yellow color. We all unrolled them and the entire floor was covered just in color. And as I say, there's a vividness and a vibrancy in the works that I have not seen before. The color is purer than ever. And if you look at the tree in the other room, that red tree where you can hardly see the stem, it's like a red color explosion of life, a true legacy of Abnade. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to have you here. We are very excited to have a special person open this exhibition tonight who has just come from a three-line whip at the House of Lords and made it just in time. We are so thrilled. Baron Boateng of Akian and Windley. Lord Boateng is a British Labour Party politician who was the member of Parliament for Brent South from 87 to 2005. He became cabinet minister in May 2002 when he was appointed as chief secretary to the treasury. Following his departure from the House of Commons, he became ambassador to South Africa, high commissioner to South Africa, from March 2005 to May 2009. He was introduced as a member of the House of Lords on the 1st of July, 2010. And now he's going to introduce the show of La Belle Go. Prof, Chile, Elizabeth, friends of the October Gallery, all. Uh, it's good to be, to be with you here uh, tonight, not least because we've been debating Brexit. And, uh, and uh, you know, I 
think the October Gallery is a very necessary antidote. Yeah. <laughs> uh, to Brexit. To Brexit. But you know, uh, and a number of you here do know, but in the tradition in which Prof. Glover and I and quite a few people here grew up in the Akan tradition, when you come to a significant place, you stand in front of significant people uh, for uh, the first time. Uh, the uh, linguist, the chief's representative, doesn't <laughs> ask you your, uh, your name or your title, uh, doesn't even ask you who your mom and dad were. And for, for, for those of us here who are from uh, the continent, whatever you do in life, wherever you go in the continent, you are never recognized for what you've done, uh, but you are always seen as, so, uh, as your mother's daughter or son, your father's daughter or son. And it gets rather galling, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Uh, I still find, I, I still find, uh, uh, find that. They don't ask you any of those things. They ask you one question and one question alone. Do you know what the question is? No. Why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> Which, if you think about it, is the best question of all to ask. Why are you here? Well, we are here to celebrate the prof, 85 years, and his life's work. That's why we are here. And, yeah, give a round of applause. And as we, as we do that, we need to reflect uh, on uh, the man and on uh, the work and the life. And <laughs> in our tradition, uh, too, and Prof, you've, you've written uh, about, uh, about this. Uh, we have the, uh, what we call the Adinkra symbols. Mm -hmm. So you can go to Côte d'Ivoire, you can go to, to, to Togo, to Ghana. The Adinkra symbol uh, is, is, is everywhere. And the Adinkra symbol for creativity is the spider's web. So if you, if you Google Ad Adinkra and creativity, you get this, this image of the spider's web. Intricate, uh, complex, uh, powerful, regardless of uh, size or weight. Uh, it draws you in and it keeps you there. <laughs> That's the, the symbol of crea creativity in our Adinkra tradition. And if you think about Prof's work, that's what it is, isn't it? It's complex. It's multifaceted. It, it's, it's powerful. It's strong. It doesn't rely on that power and strength for its size, and its size varies. And it draws you in. That's the power, it seems to me, of the prof's work. Uh, and you know, my wife and I, and many of you, call him the prof because for us uh, in, uh, in, in, in Ghana, he, he has been a great teacher and mentor, uh, not just uh, to artists, but to those who appreciate art. Uh, not just to, uh, not, uh, and indeed, particularly not just to established artists, but to all artists who've got something significant to say and worth saying. And that, I think, is the importance of, of the alliance. For me, it's, it's a must go to place in a crowd. And uh, last year, you know, we had uh, I, another part of my life, I chaired the, the International Council of the Duke of Edinburgh's Award, which in Ghana is called the Head of States Award. And we had a, our big triennial festival with 80 countries represented from all over the world come, come to Accra. And we had some of our biggest donors uh, come. And you remember, Prof, I brought them uh, to, uh, to the Alliance Gallery. Why? Because I know there that you will get an a, a insight into the creative arts 
in Ghana and indeed in, in West Africa, which you would get nowhere else. And an insight delivered in a way that is unselfish and unself-regarding. And that's something special, isn't it? Special in, in any walk of life, particularly in my own. <laughs> but uh, uh, artists are not known for their lack of ego either in many instances, are they? Uh, 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 but there is this selflessness about the prof's work. There is a willingness to encourage and to engage. And the exciting thing uh, for Janet and me whenever we go is not just the interaction with what's on the walls, with, with what fills the space, but knowing that the prof is there. And you ask, is prof here? Yes. Where is he? He's working. <laughs> and he, he does that in, in, in this particular uh, 80th decade uh, of, uh, of his life. And boy, if you are privileged ever to go to, to the studio, to see him and work, the vibrancy, the energy, the vigor, but also, and importantly, the scholarship. Uh, the scholarship of a lifetime. It moves. It moves. It moves the individual. And through art, too, we believe, don't, don't we? That we can move events. We can move mountains. We can change things. It is about transformation. It's about transformation of the way we see the world. And just look at what is, at what is around you. Uh, and you just get an insight into Africa, into the human condition that excites, that engages, that holds. And so for that prof, much thanks. Madassi. Madassi. In our language, it means thank you, thank you very much. The two most important words in any language. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, there's something else I want to do, Prof. You know, as we as we celebrate uh, your life and and your work, I want to cry to ring out here in this October gallery. I'm not sure it's rung out in the October gallery before. I, I'm pretty certain it hasn't rung out uh, in Bloomsbury. Uh, but, it, it, but it ought to. <laughs> but it doesn't always have occasion to, but on this occasion it is so appropriate. Uh, in our tradition, when you want to pick someone up, when you want to celebrate something, you cry out a word and there is a response. So I'm going to cry out the word. There will be a response from the Ghanaians uh, and uh, Ghanaian aficionados. <laughs> then we will divide the room, and one side will say the first thing, and the other side will say the second. We're going to do that three times. You know what I'm going to say? Prof! Prof! Prof Glover! Aiko! Yay! Aiko! Yay! Aiko! Aiko, this side, yae. Prof, you're not to say anything, because it's for you. <laughs> so, Aiko, yae. Aiko, yae. Aiko, yae. Prof, Glover. This is touching. Um, 37 years ago, um, I was uh, introduced to this place by Chile Elizabeth. And um, they've really nurtured my work. Um, it's particularly touching. 
I'm not much of a speaker, particularly when a politician has spoken. <laughs> <laughs> you don't speak. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm most touched. And I thank you for um, both friends that come from Ghana, a couple are here, and people come from all over the world. Um, I met Robert's here. I Robert's here. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. um, and those, uh, and then my friends who were my colleagues at the university who were exchanging together. I see faces that uh, bring back memories. I don't want to cry. Mm -hmm. Thank you all very much. <laughs>